internet the release of the 2024 player's handbook is fast approaching and the dm is currently having an anxiety attack breakdown in his bedroom because he realized he's going to have to convert the entire game for his players and none of his players are going to even remotely put any effort in so he's definitely going to have to just remake all their character sheets for him for them and then he just thought about how much work that's going to be and how they're going to keep asking why this rule is different or how this new rule works and so he's considering uh moving to a different state state and never speaking to his players again so sessions how did, how did you how did you start this cold open calling out matt and then quickly converting to calling me out instead <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be honest I wasn't actually trying to call either of you specifically out but if the shoe fits yep listen Matt has no excuse roll 20 is making it like as easy as humanly possible to convert I'm just saying so like well so Matt's issue right now is that he doesn't know if he wants to do Tales of the Valiant 5e advanced or um 1d or whatever new 5e 2024 5e 5e 24 is a phrase that i've been that i heard, that i liked recently i think 5.5 is also what a lot of people are going with um i mean i would i would be fine with tales of the valiant personally that's just me i'm just you know just throwing that one out there uh <clears throat> i don't want to play advanced 5e though T- tbh Anyway. It do seem crunchy, like well, crunchy and just like not. It's just five e, but more. I'm like that's not. If we're gonna play a different thing, I want to play a different thing. I don't want to just play like five e with some paprika on top. You know? Yeah. Well, it seems like they tried to fucking. They tried to um, Pathfinder a five five e. I, I don't know. I haven't looked. I mean, I've I very casually looked through some of the level up 5e stuff. I've looked at some of the monsters. None of the monsters particularly impressed me or got me very excited, though. So I'm not really sure what it is about that that's making Matt like think that that'll be a fun system. I don't I don't really know. Uh, it just seems like he was mulling it over in his head. I'm just, I'm just like I said, I, in general. yeah, I don't know. I've heard people talk about it quite a bit. I have not looked at it enough to really know why it's worthy of any attention. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like what is it? What about it is is different enough that it's like uh, its own kind of subset? Like, what about it makes it advanced? You know what I mean? Like, I don't really I don't know enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he gave me a little bit of a rundown. It, it seems like they Take a pissified D and D. What does that statement mean? The roll to t- roll to take a piss. It just gives you rolls oh. and stats for everything. Oh, if that's the case, I definitely don't want to deal with that. Yeah, I mean the character build stuff seemed mildly interesting, but yeah, I mean they like I said, it seems like they pathfinderified the game. Yeah, I see. Okay. Anyway, um. Either way, the way Roll20 is doing it to convert seems like it's going to be pretty good, so it shouldn't be that difficult. None of that has anything to do... Well, it sort of does have something to do with what we're about to talk about, I suppose. I'm actually... I'm so used to saying none of that has anything to do with it that I just said that off instinct, but now that I'm thinking about it, it is actually relevant. So, yeah. Anyway, disregard what I said there. Uh... <laughs> Just gonna let me drown. You're not gonna interject. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. I'm having a good time, bud. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for letting me drown. Uh, <laughs> it's the hand with the hand sticking out of the water yeah, and the just high the five. high five. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we continue our look at the 2024 classes, which are just around the corner. September 17th. The book is officially out. Um, some game stores are getting it early, I think, question mark. So there's the Gen Con copies and then there's going to be maybe the early game store copies. I don't know. The game store near me are getting them on the 17th. So that's when I will be getting the books. Um, but either way, they are on the way. 
Uh, there has been a lot more information and news and stuff and tiddly bits that have come out since we started talking about this beyond just the videos. So like I said in one of the previous videos, there may be some information we missed or didn't notice or said wrong or blah, 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 blah. That's why, because there's all sorts of inflation floating all the fuck all over the place on the Internet. But before you start looking for any of that precious information, I would like you to take a moment. Say your peace with Jesus. Let him know that you love him and he loves you. And then hit follow or subscribe on whatever platform you're currently listening. When Sam is just like, God, <laughs> God, is that you? Um, before we actually get into the main thing, though, I'm just curious, Isaiah, did you? I know the answer is no, but I'm just I'm just going to ask for posterity's sake. Did you watch the D&D Direct? On either of these classes? No, the one that came out like two days ago, yesterday, day before. No, no, I, I know. I know you didn't. Like I said, I knew yeah. the answer to the question, but uh, OK, so we Look, got, I've been too busy playing Baldur's Gate. <laughs> we got some more information. Finally, about, uh, finally. Yes. Yes. Isaiah's, uh, you know, was fucking how many months behind everybody? <laughs> like Last two years, year? but it's fine. Look, Last, not I couldn't years. afford it back then. I'm not, not uh, yeah, years. It's like a year and a half, like yeah, yeah, a year and some change. Uh, point being, um, D I got it for free. <laughs> D&D had another I could afford it for free dollars. Um, yeah, D&D did another D&D direct. Uh, which I think is only the second one they've done yet. Um, and uh, it's pretty short. It's like 20 minutes or so, uh, but uh, 19 minutes. But that being said, um, we got some more information about uh, Project Sigil which is what they're calling their 3D virtual tabletop. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember. Do you remember? I remember um, our little conversation I... about the uh, the 3D tabletop. And we were like, what would they have to do to make us actually use this fucking thing? Do you remember what you said? I don't. All right. You know, I really tried to tee you up for the spike on that one. We said it so long ago, brother. What do you mean? I, I, I can't believe you just completely failed me like this. Anyway, what we both said was some nature of a really intricate, well done 3D map builder where you can basically, you know, make your own like video game style terrain. Basically, um, it has exactly that. And Ooh. And it has a Hero Forge style, style mini builder in it, too. Fuck. All right. Well, but wait, there's more. Remember how we were talking about when D&D Beyond released maps and we were like, why would you release maps if you are also currently working on Project Sigil? Not that we knew it was called that, but, you know, why would you do both at the same time? Right. Maps is the like 2D thing that they put out in like a kind of alpha version on D&D Beyond. And now they're also working on this 3D project. What's the point of doing both of them? Would you believe we have an answer to that question? I, I would now, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the reason is because you basically can use them together seamlessly. Oh? Yeah. So in the 3D, in pro in projects, in Sigil, the, the project, not the place in D&D, &D, uh, you can import 2D maps and 2D tokens. So you could have 3D tokens on a 2D map or 2D tokens on a 3D map or just do it all 2D in Project Sigil and it all just integrates with D&D Beyond's maps. I'm not going to lie. I was really hoping you were going to say you could scan the 2D maps to make a 3D environment because that would be insane. No, I don't think you can do that, but you could lay down the 2D map and then use the map builder to simply build the 3D environment directly on top of it. You could, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think that would be very hard. And from what I've heard from the couple of uh, influencers who have, you know, actually messed around with Project Sigil a little bit, it's quite a good map builder. Nice. So basically, we're getting everything we asked for. Also, it's free. Like completely, like free 99 Free, free 99 to use. Whoa. Now, granted, we don't know what kind of there is going to be monetization in it. Obviously, we don't know what style of monetization it's going to be. And the reason we don't know that is because the developers also don't know that. <laughs> oh, 
Fantastic. Uh, because they have said very openly, we don't know what kind of monetization we want to do for do with this. So we're going to let the fans try it out. And then you guys tell us what kind of stuff you might want to pay for or what forms or what style of like how you would want to pay for stuff. So like an example was given where would you want to pay like 25 cents for a texture pack, for example, or would you rather have, you know, 15, 20 dollar Castle Raven loft pre-made map that comes with all the assets and then you can use the pre-made map or use the assets to build your own. Like, what kind of monetization do you want to do? They haven't decided yet. So, yeah. So they're still... Like, yes, like all of the above? Maybe. Here's the thing. That's one of those things that I don't mind monetizing the shit out of. Mm-hmm. As long as you have ever Like, don't block off tools from that, right, right? right? Give us the whole basic toolkit... And if we want to do the hard work for free, we can do the hard work for free or you can make it a subscription service or pay for it. And then they just start throwing fucking assets at you. Yeah. People will pay for that. I will pay for that. Yeah. So basically, uh, they don't know exactly how they want to monetize. They're working on it and they're open to suggestions and a closed beta is coming soon. Hmm. Yeah. And like I said, they're doing exactly what me and you said we would want them to do. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, the beta is closed, so it is like a chance to get in, obviously. Uh, but you literally just go yeah. on your D&D Beyond count and say, uh, I would like to uh, sign up for the beta. And they're like, cool, you're signed up. Uh, and if you get uh. in, you get an activation code plus five additional activation codes. So only one person in your party, like if you have a group of norm, you know, your standard group of players, whoever you usually play with, only one of y'all needs to get it. So what I'm saying is sign up, bitch, sign up now. I will do that. Anyway, uh, I just thought I'd mention all that because I was, um, I was a little flabbergasted, if I'm being honest. Understandable. I was shocked. This is that thing, though, right? On a separate notion, this is this thing where uh-huh. it's like Wizards does something fucking sick. Yes. And then they ruin it. You're like, God yes. damn it, Wizards. And Hopefully- then they do something <laughs> sick and then they ruin it. You're like, God damn it, Wizards. <laughs> yes. And this just keeps happening. Hopefully this doesn't get ruined, but basically everything they said, the rest of the information in the direct was like nothing super crazy. Um, But pretty much everything they said in the direct about Project Sigil was kind of what I wanted to hear, more or less. So I went from not interested at all to, like, maybe interested. I will say the one big problem with this at the end of the day is that a 3D virtual tabletop is going to be more labor intensive than a 2D one just by the nature of the of the beast. So it may be a situation where like 90% of the time I use, like it, let's say I use this on the regular for playing D&D, right? 90% of the time I use 2D assets. And then when I want to do something big and cool, you bust out the 3D stuff, right? Like, cause it's going to take time to build those maps, no matter how good the map builder is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, so yes, but they, they, there are a lot of things they can do to speed up the process, right? If, if you have yes. like a yes. pretty well put together snapping system, that'll help. If you've got like, if you have a bunch of assets that are all sort if of keyed to each other. Well, if there's like a templating system and like a proper copy paste system that works really well, there's definitely things you can do for sure. But no matter what, it's still going to be more of a process than like your basic 2D thing, you know, because you have to account for a third dimension. So there's going to be more stuff going on. There. So it's going to be more labor intensive. But here's the thing. If it's really fun to use, you might like the labor, you know, <laughs> it could be a really yeah, for fun sure. tool. So I don't know. I'm not I don't know if I'm going to wholly switch over to it. Probably not, because I'm someone who plays a lot of games other than D&D. But, you know, I'm now considering using it where I really was not considering it before. <laughs> so we'll see. Very fair. 
That's very fair. It could come out like shit, though, too. That's still on the table. It could, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't think... It, uh, just based on you, you saying people saying it's pretty sick... Yeah. I don't feel like it will, because we do have some evidence of it being good. And at this, this point, true. most creators have no need to fucking slob the wizard's knob anymore. No, like, right, The good really. faith is gone. Yeah, so. no. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um... They did also make the claim, and this is the one claim I kind of don't believe them on. They claimed, you know, it's not a and d tool set. It's just a virtual tool set. You could play anything if you want in it. I'm a little skeptical mm. of that part. That's the one. Yeah, that where sounds like, kind of like cap. Yeah, I don't know. There probably will be generic tools, but if you think about just roll 20 sheets for different kinds of games right if you just think about all of the stuff required into making a basic roll 20 sheet to cover like the basic functionality of a different system there's no way you're gonna make generic tools that can cover everything so like will it work could you play you know apocalypse world in project sigil maybe but is it gonna work as well as having a proper character sheet on a roll 20 or a foundry or something like that probably not so you know yeah that one i might think they might be exaggerating a little bit apparently they claim somebody made shoots and ladders in project sigil like uh, someone on the dev team that's really uh, funny which well, is so funny, the, the, the thing we'll that the thing that worries me right is if they're if they're gonna talk it up about it being a generic map maker yeah what I don't, I, I, if that's the case, give us assets that aren't just fucking fantasy. medieval fantasy. Yeah. Like Western medieval, like well, Western medieval fantasy. So give us like, you they, know, like they did Chinese s- gardens or right, fucking right. massive pagodas. Give us shit like that. They did say it's also going to have an open marketplace for other creators to make stuff much like Perfect. a roll 20. So the hope is that those other creators will do that. Uh, so yeah, but yes, if, it, yeah, if, if we just end up with 6,000 different versions of a tavern, I will be a little disappointed for sure. Mm-hmm. That's not the main topic though. I just wanted, I just wanted to mention that because I thought it was interesting that me and you were like, I want them to do this, that, and this. And then wizard said, we're doing this, that, and this. And I went, Oh, okay. Here you go. Uh, all right. Nice. Shit. All right. Fucking all right, fam. What the hell? Um, so yeah, our main topic though, we're talking about the fighter and we're talking about the cleric, uh, unless of case, unless of course we take way too goddamn long and then maybe we're just talking about fighter, but probably not. Uh, it'll be fine. What, uh, what just on a, just on a, a very general level looking at the fighter, how you, how you feeling about that sauce? Is it, is it delicious? Tasty? I mean, you want to rub it all over your body? No. Mm. I'm gonna be honest. Okay. It, uh, d- did I give it a little less credit last week than it deserves? Yes. But I'm still not stoked for it. I think it's a lot better than we had. And it is. Th- there's enough I, new stuff that I kind of feel like I might consider playing a fighter now. That's big praise from you coming from you. Correct, yes. There's just enough. There's just enough. I mean, a, a portion of that is also the weapon mastery stuff, which isn't necessarily directly tied to fighter, but obviously they also utilize it the most. So, you know. Yeah. What what is is there a specific thing that's eating at you that where you're like, this is stupid? Uh yes. We've actually talked about this before, like on and off podcast. So for me, mm-hmm. I, it bugs the shit out of me, and I know that the answer is weapon mastery, but it still bugs the shit out of me that after giving so many marshals basically battle master maneuvers, that the fighter doesn't get them as standard. And yes, it gets the the weapon mastery stuff, but unless they directly change something, just on a straight action economy uh, basis. You won't be able to use that many of them that often, right? Because it's going to take you a full action just to swap your weapon. So you're likely going to be locked into one weapon mastery option and then one of the fair enough, like three that you get. So but they, they're the same. They did change how the weapon swapping works a little bit, but it's a little confusing. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, 
I, 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 I'm not even going to try and explain it because I don't totally remember. And the phrasing of it, I remember being a little confusing. So, but they did tweak it. I remember that. There was some sort of language from what I recall about being able to swap a weapon with an attack. But I don't remember exactly what the phrasing is. And I, I don't want to go on the hunt for it right now. But yeah. So point being, you may be able to use them a bit more. But uh, yeah. We'll see. I, we'll yeah, see, basically. And- to be fair, and I, I can't remember what, which specific ones that you get, like the, the generic maneuvers that you get. Uh-huh. You remember? Uh, yeah, you get uh, push, push slow. Uh, and what was the other one? Uh, where is it? Uh, uh, sap. Uh, it might have been sap. Might have been sap. Uh, tactical master. Uh, push sap and slow. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the most boring battle master options. Congrats. <laughs> push and slow, definitely. I mean, sap. Sap is interesting, it, but like push and slow. Are you shitting me? Wait, what does sap do again? Hold on. Uh, sap gives a, a creature disadvantage on their next attack roll. Right, right. It's, it's the vicious mockery one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, like I, they're just boring. So it's like, oh, well, you can use them no matter what. I'm like, cool. They're still fucking boring. Well, I don't want to use. Them. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny you say that um, I've I'm, I I initially was on board for the weapon masteries. I'm now starting to feel a little more iffy about them. I'm now like starting to feel everyone like, else gets these cool specialized maneuvers. And it's like, oh, the thing that created the maneuvers, they don't get their own specialized ones. Only ba- only a part of them does. Well, yeah, I mean, so the fighter not having the maneuvers, uh, Mr. Jeremy, patron saint of the crawfish, said, you know, we thought about it, but we decided to keep Battlemaster because certain people wanted Fighter to be, you know, I guess people wanted the little, bro- the little, you know, the mystical little brother who doesn't really know how to play D&D class and is really easy. So they kept it. They kept Fighter as being that class for the most part. That's what he said. I don't, I don't know if he's sort of like sort of covering like maybe there's a different story there or what, but that's what he claimed. He said there was a version that they internally play tested where Battlemaster maneuvers were just base thing baseline for fighters. People didn't like it, apparently. I don't well, know. So, th- that, so this is what makes it funny to me is you didn't have to do one or the other. Because like, we were we talked about this when we talked about fighter. Just give Battlemaster more shit to do right yeah make their maneuvers stronger give them more let them use multiple in one attack yeah in the same way that fucking barbarian and rogue can use multiple maneuvers in one attack well yeah later on uh, fair enough but they still can do it yeah i mean there's definitely a world where you could have had the fighter has battle master maneuvers and then the battle master gets better maneuvers But I think what Jeremy Crawford was saying is that, like, people wanted fighter to be basic on purpose. People actually wanted that because there's certain people that just want to play that just want to do the role play thing. And then when the combat stuff happens, they just say, I whack with stick. And that's all they want to do. They don't want to have to choose spells or choose maneuvers or choose this. They just want to hit with stick, you know? Okay, yes, here's my problem with that that sentiment. I don't agree That's with that. That's not going to stop. It's not going to stop. Do you know how many people I've played with who played fucking druids and wizards who had no idea how their sheets work? Yeah. You're not going to stop role players from role playing. They're not going to delegate themselves to this one basic bitch class. No, no, I don't think he's I don't think he necessarily is saying they're going to delegate themselves. But I think what he's saying is some people wanted a class like some people were actively looking for which is the simplest class like they were asking for it, I think is what he was saying. Yeah, yeah. It, the answer was barbarian. I think the answer should be barbarian personally, but I guess they felt like fighter made it more was sense. It, it, it was. was barbarian forever. Well, like uh, it, with barbarian and fighter, I think fought for this top spot as most brain dead class. Because <laughs> I 2014 fighter, I, I don't know now. Now it's probably yeah, barbarians 
got more stuff. So it's pretty clearly fighter. It, uh, but I feel like even in before, comparison, Barbarian is way more tech heavy than this fighter is. Uh, for the most part, yeah. But like, yeah, I don't know. They wanted it to be fighter, I guess. I, I, I don't. I'm not really I, sure. I want to know who this 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 focus group is and whether or in, not this is fucking cap because I don't believe them. I mean, I guess the, this focus group was internal playtesters, is I believe what he said. So like the people call that, a cap on that. Like I'm done. People, the people that they hire to play test the game as opposed to just like, you know, the greater populace. So, you know, yeah, I don't believe that. I I agree. I think it, it might be true. I just don't believe it. I, I guess the idea, the reason they wanted fighter to be the most basic of the classes is because fighter archetypal archetypally is like the default fantasy guy, right? Like when you kind of think of default fantasy protagonist in fantasy world, you, your brain sort of naturally defaults to a fighter in like some kind of version of a fighter, right? You kind of think of a link type character. So I guess because it's so archetypal, they wanted it to be fighter, whereas a barbarian is a little bit more specific in the kind of vibe a barbarian has by virtue of the whole raging thing and the whole like primal magic stuff or the primal energy stuff or, you know, whatever. So I guess that that I think that's why they wanted it to be fighter. If I were to gander, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I just. I mean, I, the, the cat's kind of out of the bag, right? It's like a it is. Yes. Fighter for me was a three out of I think I said a three out of five. It's yes. still a three out of five. It's, yes. It I has mean, not increased. Look, Battlemaster's still and there. It, so, you know, you can still it is. It, it's so like, here's the thing. And here's the thing. If Look you were going to give way. this a point value, it'd go from like I liked Battlemaster. I liked fighter at 75 to like 80 now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe a four, but like I mean, look at it this way. If you had any inclination to b- play a fighter before, you're probably just going to have pretty much a better time across the board now because you still could go battle master. You're going to get more feet so you can take the battle master feet maneuver stuff to get more maneuvers. You have the weapon masteries now. The base fighter has more stuff to do. So like it is still going to be more interesting than the fighter you were playing before. It's just not what you were hoping it's not a big enough change it's not as big of a change as you personally were hoping for no and correct at this point so you know what, you know what this has me this is this is me going well now i'm not going to take two levels in fighter for the the action surge dip i'm just going to take three levels for the subclass and then just still use fighter as my multi-class bitch like i mean yeah that works too I look at fighter now and I'm like, there's a couple of there. There's enough changes that I'm like, I could potentially see see a version of a fighter I could play. Um, I I mean, we got Psy Warrior, so I might consider that Battle Master still fun. What was there was a fighter subclass we didn't get, though, that I really wanted. I'm trying to remember what the other one was that I was thinking of on. Cavalier? Uh, no. What was it? Well, I like Cavalier. Oh, I wanted Arcane Archer to be a thing really bad. Oh, yeah. It's not in there. No. Wasn't that? That was Pete. Oh, no. It was Xanathar's. Xanathar's. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted Eldritch Knight to get a tune up and um, yeah, it got almost none. It got a tune up, but it's like whatever. Yeah, it's almost none. Basically, it got something. There's not much. You want to see? You want to see a version of Eldritch Knight that feels a little bit more like what I actually want it to be? Uh, look at the Spellblade in Tales of the Valiant. It's much closer. I've seen that. I, it still needs more sauce. I still think the spell. It's the Spellblade in Tales of the Valiant. It, I would like more, but it's not. It's better. It's more in the direction that I want Eldritch Knight to go in for sure. I, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I, th- I mean, I like I said, I haven't seen that one, but two, two my, my go to is if someone wants to play Eldritch Knight, I would just say go Blade Singer and then take a two level dip and fighter. Yes. I, a, a good example is the spell blade in Tales of the Valiant. Um, their their weapon is a spell casting focus and they can make their their sword or whatever their weapon is into a plus one weapon. To a magical plus one weapon. That's Fine. cool. That's you know how the weapon bond thing. Yeah, their weapon bond makes it a plus one weapon as opposed to the goofy ass weapon bond in D&D where it's like, you can teleport it back to your hand. Wow. That's stupid shit. 
It's like only effective if you play a throne fighter. Yes. Yeah, correct. It's fucking stupid otherwise. Anyway, let's actually talk about the fighter. All right. Level one, you get your fighting styles. Uh, Nothing has changed with the fighting styles other than the fact that fighting styles have now been nested into feats. Um, Basically, it just says you get a fighting style feat when you're level one in fighter. Uh, And then you get uh, second wind. Uh, One good thing uh, is that short rest uh, brain brain. You get one use of your second wind back on a short rest. Uh, on a long rest, you get all of them back. Um, and I think later down the line, they get more uses of them back or something like that, too, of second win. So basically, you can second win more. Oh, and then they use a couple of abilities that actually use your second win die for different things, which I thought was fun. So that that's what I am actually excited about. The tactical yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah that, those are cool. Um, you get your weapon mastery. Uh, I think fighters... Does the fighter start with like three? Yeah, fighter starts with three mastery properties. You can change them on a long rest and you get more later. Uh, So you get the most of anybody, which makes sense. Uh, Level two, you get this new ability called Tactical Mind. When you fail an ability check, you can expend a second wind to gain a 1d10 to add to the roll. Plus your second wind usage isn't expended if you fail. So basically... You know, you make a check of some kind. You're like, all right, I would like to add to that. You expend a second wind. You get an extra D10 on top of it. If you still fail, you keep your second wind. So if you really want to succeed this check, you might as well try and use it <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, you lose nothing if it fails. So yeah. you might as well. So it's very every much time hard. you fail second wind. Obviously, level three subclasses will come back around to those. Uh, level four, you get your usual ASI stuff. Level five, you get tactical shift. Um, you use a second wind as a bonus action. If you use your second wind as your bo- on your bonus action, uh, you can then move half your speed as part of that bonus action and don't provoke attacks of opportunity. So basically, you're like, oh no, I'm getting my ass beat, and the wizard wizard Jimmy over there is also getting his cheeks clapped by some goblins. Uh, let me heal up and then bull rush the goblins as fast as I can to try and save them. Uh, which I like this because it just adds to that feeling of a fighter being the the guy who's like moving around the field in t- to try and get himself in the best position to like help everyone out. It's good vibes. No real complaint on that yeah. one. Uh, yeah, like I said, the tactical stuff, it's sick. Um, both mind and shift. I'm just like, oh, these are actually super interesting. Yes. Yeah, I like both of those. And then six. What is it? Uh, Six, seven and eight. You get two ASIs and a martial archetype feature. So, you know, your subclass stuff. Um, Indomitable at level nine, which uh, did they change? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You get to add your level as well. And at level, it's way better. It's impressively good now. Yes. So you get it. You have to add your fighter level to your roles with Indomitable. So you get to re-roll the roll and add a plus nine to it standard, which will go up to a plus 20. No, 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 no. It, or, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. When, you, when you get at your ability, fighter level, yeah, if yeah. you hit max out, you're going to get a yes. plus 20 to any roll. You, you just won't fail. Yeah, it's basically a no fail that's, at that point. Yeah. It, see, again, that's cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think you can use it more, though, which is unfortunate, because don't you only get like one of indomitable indomitable per day uh you max that at three i think base fighter do you uh, i believe so um indomitable i was gonna say i'm checking the old yeah three times at level 17 oh okay all right so yeah that's pretty sick can you use it on it's only saving throws right only saves yeah oh yeah so you're just like i don't care how many times the dragon breathes fire on me i'm still going <laughs> Yeah, the Lich cast disintegrate in you and you go, <laughs> that's, that's cute. That's cute. No. Uh, then we also get tactical mastery. So apparently the thing that's kind of interesting about this particular ability is uh, the Crawfish Priest said that uh, originally this ability was like the fighter could just swap masteries like every turn or something like that and use whatever they want. 
but I guess people found that to be like analysis paralysis and too much crap like layered on their brain at once. So they gave them these three. And I think he said these three were the ones that got used the most. I think is what he said. I don't believe that. I for a second. I mean, I don't know, but I I, I believe when you have it. you have stuff like cleave and vex, uh, and graze. Like I, like no, like uh, you've got one that lets you attack all and all targeted enemies that you get to choose within five feet of your swing. Ones that cause disadvantage on anyone but you, and as the fighter, you're gonna be doing that a lot. Uh or ones that guarantee damage. I just don't believe that. Also, like, why is push a weapon mastery and not just an action that you can do as part of the unarmed strike? But regardless, and like slow, uh, you can you can it, push with an unarmed strike, but it doesn't deal damage. Oh, I get fair enough. I get and then slow. I, I just I don't see how they could make movement more relevant. I don't see them doing yeah, it. That, that would cost such re- like. That's the thing that's weird about slow is like movement is already not. Slow seems like it would be very good in the same way that Ray of Frost seems like it'd be pretty good. But yeah, because there's not a lot of reason to. Basically, movement is relevant for the first like two turns or so. And then most of the time, once you're in position, there's not a lot of reason to get out of position. So it is yeah. a little weird. Honestly, and look, it, I, I'm being very uncharitable right now, and I'm aware of it. But n- yeah, everything in these screams to me, well, we wanted to give them to people, but we didn't want them to be too strong. So we're going to give them sort of variances to what everyone else got, which is a push, a pull, and a stop. Right? A push, a pull, and a debuff. And a debuff, well, yeah. Because that's that's yeah. basically what what fucking um, sort of what Rogue has, right? You but, have yeah, your like so, you have well, your push, your trip, and your debuff. Yeah. For context, what it is is the fighter can apply the weapon mastery of push, sap, or slow uh, on any attack they want. Push pushes a target uh, ten feet away. Uh, sap makes it so they have disadvantage on their next attack. Uh, and slow makes it so they lose 10 feet of movement. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, basically it's just. Now, can you double up, though? Hold on. I, I just re- uh, when you hold on, let me we consult the Necronomicon real quick. Um, because this I was a little unclear on. Now I want to know because we're talking about it. I'm just going to keep making noises with my mouth. Till I get to the page, this is called vamping for time. Uh, when you vamp for time, kids, you talk and make noises so that the the people don't get bored. Okay, when you attack with a weapon, who's vamp? Mastered- is that because he's a vampire? But no, it's because he's bisexual. What were you thinking? Shut up, snake. <laughs> you good? You good now? I'm, I am. Yeah, you said vamping, and that I just sent my brain. It's reeling. not what that meant, but okay. Uh, I know. I know it's not what it meant. I just think tactical mastery. (laughs) When you attack with a weapon whose mastery property you can use, you can replace that property with push, sap, or slow. Yeah. Okay. So basically, you always have push, slap, or slow ready to go, regardless of what what weapon you are using. I will say that could be quite useful, uh, particularly for ranged weapons, because normally the ranged weapon has whatever ability, and you don't want them getting any closer, so you hit them with slow. That kind of thing can be useful. I I mean, it will be useful. It does just feel, you know, a little limited. That is, which is unfortunate for sure. Yeah, I, I so this, here's the thing that confuses me, right? It's like, they're like, oh, well, we gave you all of them, but people had an analysis paralysis. I See, again, what makes more sense to me is that people would go, well, I like these three. So these are just the three I'm going to keep using. Yeah, I, right. You pick I, your favorites and you just use your favorites. Yeah. And if someone's like, well, use something else. And you're like, yeah, but I don't really know how to use those. I know how to use these. So I'm going to keep using these. Yeah. I mean, this gets into that whole gray area situation of 
well, I'm just going to do what I know how to do. And then someone's like, yeah, but that's not optimal. And then someone else goes, I don't care. And then they're like, but I, you need to play optimally because X, Y, and Z. And we're working together to fight the monster. So I need you to play optimal, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of the eternal debate. You know, video games have if this they problem cared too. That much, it's, it's literally the "you don't pay my sub" situation. You know, like yeah, well, yeah. If wizards cared that much, wizards wouldn't. Wizard and druid would not have the spell sheets that they have. You know, I just wouldn't. I guess, but the problem that the reason that the reason the arg- the counter argument to that would be they have the spell sheets they have because if they took away the spell sheets, people would get mad about that much more than they're mad about the analysis paralysis. You know what I mean? Like. It's like a, it's a, it's a weighing of the, uh, it's a, it's a, you have to weigh the scales on how fucked you are one way or the other. Wait, I just had a thought. Why can't uh-huh. we, we could have had this both ways. Why? Really? So let's say what you, you just prepare them. So it's like, oh, every day you get three masteries that you can choose between. Um, well, you kind of can. And that way that. you literally do lock people in. You're like, okay, well, these are the three I took today. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Maybe. All right. I'm calling it now. If I do run 5e, which I almost certainly will not, but if I do, <laughs> I'm, that's how I'm going to run fighters. I mean, maybe. And someone's going, but that's too much. I'm going to go, I don't give a fuck. You don't have to use that. <laughs> you can pick the three that come in this and just live with it. I don't care. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, look, this is this is the endless debate that will just, that literally has no answer, right? Like, more simple game versus more complex game and what's better and what's not. And pre- You know, there's pros and cons to everything. So like you feel one way, the designers feel another way, one player feels another way, another player feels another way, you know, like, I don't know. I get why they did it. I'm not that mad about it. If you want to homebrew it to work a different way, that's fine. I mean, that is literally the glory of tabletop games is you can homebrew shit to work whatever the fuck way you want. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. you know. Level 13, we get studied attacks. Uh, which I get why it's called that, but I don't know. I don't like the name studied attacks or something, but whatever. Um, if you make an attack roll against a creature and miss, you have advantage on your next attack roll against that creature before the end of your next turn. Fighters are going to have advantage a lot <laughs> in 2020. They are also from things. We're like- getting this fucking copium language again. Dial up your mastery over weapons. Shut up. <laughs> Where do you? Oh, I mean, I am going to be this guy. I am going to be the fucking angry that, Sicilian man. That one's not <laughs> that copium. We all hate whiffing on attacks, but this new ability will does for sure. It's just it's this fucking language. I don't like it's language. not that cope. It's not as bad as the ranger situation. No, that one's an all time. That's that's yeah. we're never going to hit those numbers again, baby. No. Like, <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, and then level 19, we get your epic boon. They recommend the boon of combat prowess, which is the one that just lets you auto hit. Uh, solid boon and uh, level 20 don't you know it it's the same yep Yep. they get a fourth attack get a fourth attack Mm -hmm. yep Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. am I mad about this yes yes I am yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) yes I am uh, you know, I, you know, it's pisses me off, too. As I was looking through Tales of the Valiant, and I was like, oh, what's the fighter capstone? I was like, ah, it's not like way more amazing, but it is cooler. It is just like more interesting. And I'm like, man, you could have just. OK, all right. You could have at you least wanna, tried. Was, it I was going to say, let me go find it because it's actually a decent one. Um, let me see. Yeah. OK. Uh, it's funny. They call their level 20 capstone abilities in this game. Uh, epic boons, which I think is kind of funny. They are not the same as the <laughs> 5e ones. Uh, once on each of your turns, when you hit a creature or object with a weapon attack on your turn, you can cause the attack to deal additional damage equal to your strength or dex score. The attack's damage ignores resistances, immunities, and it can't be reduced or avoided by any means. So once on each of your turns, you get guaranteed damage based on your strength or dex score. Which again, not super amazing, but better than just another attack. You know? 
Yeah, well, so if you had something like Graze, like the Graze ability, Weapon Mastery, you could use that to add to that damage, and then you'd get a, like enough damage for a standard attack. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, if, you get, you if, auto hit once per round. If they chose to make it that way, yes. Yeah, you could, hypothetically. Honestly, I don't know why the fucking fighter's level 20 ability isn't just you auto hit once per round. You know, you just get a free. Uh, yeah, I just yeah. like let you keep the three attacks and then you just get a fourth auto hit. So no yeah. matter what you three get a, normal like, attacks, one yeah. auto hit attack and you just roll damages normally for the auto hit attack. I like that feels at least a little bit cool because that's like the fighters thing. Like you, you fight, you you good at fight. Like you shouldn't, you shouldn't like like I get it with four attacks. You're not going to miss very often because you're just probability, but you still could. And like a level 20 fighter not being able to hit the dragon just feels like, oh, what the fuck, dude? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Just let it be an auto hit. Like, I don't. I. I uh, anyway. So, yeah, I'm Wizards, with you, bud. Wizards didn't change it. It's an extra attack. Man, I might even rule. Shit. I might even just make that if I ever run 5e, which I also probably won't. I might just make that a thing. <laughs> Yeah, because that sounds interesting. Just one of your attacks auto hits like. Shit, shit. Um, yeah, shit. Well, shit. All right. Subclasses. Um, Battlemaster, uh, you get your usual uh, maneuvers and your superiority dice. Um, the maneuvers from Tasha's have been brought over, so you have all the extra ones. The big one is their cha the change to know your enemy. Uh, which, hey, look, know your enemy actually uh, usable ability now. As a bonus action, you can discern the strengths and weaknesses of a creature you can see within 30 feet of yourself. Uh, you know whether that creature has any immunities, resistances or vulnerabilities. And if the creature has any, you know what they are. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. You can also restore a use of this feature by expending a superiority die. No action required. So you can, as a bonus action, look at the bad guy and go, he's afraid of the light. Kill him. Hit him with Jesus. Uh, which, the only thing, my yeah. only thing with this now uh -huh. is that if you gave us this, you better goddamn well give us more of that across the board of the monster manual. You know... I hope so, but we have not seen any monster stat blocks yet, or we've seen very few monster stat blocks, so I don't know. Mr. Crawford, I'm telling you this right now. If we don't get those, there's La Chancla coming for you. <laughs> if you give us I will ability, throw that shit right through the fucking wizard's window in a, and clap you upside the head with a sandal. You give us the ability that interacts with more like vulnerabilities and resistances and then don't do anything extra with them and just leave them as is. Yeah. Yes. My chancleta's coming for you, bro. Like, I'm just letting you know. Fair enough. I, uh... I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I hope so. You know what? I wanted to have tech on this ability, and maybe this is a bit much, but just tell me the bot. Just tell me the enemy HP. Yes. Tell me their HP. Just hard yes. Just tell me. Literally, yes. Don't give this... I, and I hate that, like... Don't... It, it, you know if you have more or less. I don't give a fuck about that. I want to know what the number is. Yeah, yeah. Like... I'm a fighter with 47 HP. Of course the dragon's got more fucking HP than I do. <laughs> don't, what the fuck? Don't give it... <laughs> don't give this ability to anyone else. Make this a fighter-only thing. Did no one else gets this shit. But yeah, just let me be like, what's their HP? That's all. And it's only Dude, on that, that shit used to make me laugh I so would even hard. accept... I would even accept... If you could, if you had to say three fourths, half, or a quarter, I'd even take that. Oh yeah, yeah, I'd even take that. But yeah, no, dude, that used to, that shit used to have me in stitches. It took a minute to do, and you get yes, it at level yeah. three, and it's like, yeah, no shit. Every enemy has more health than you <laughs> yeah. at level three. Um, unless you're unless you're like strategically kicking a kobold upside the head every minute, and you're like. Okay, now he has less HP than you. Like, <laughs> yes. Yep. Um, and then small change on the relentless feature. You now use a... So once per turn, when you use a maneuver, you can roll a D8 and use the number rolled instead of expending a superiority die. That's, uh, you know... Just, you know, that's fine. It's just a little extra something-something. 
Mm. But I, I don't even. What was the original wording even on that? I actually don't. Uh, no, your enemy. It tells you no, what one of those things no, are per minute. Not oh. no. A man just out here ignoring me. Relentless. Uh, when oh. you roll initiative and had no superiority dice, you gain one superiority yeah, them, die. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah, I like the new version better. You just get a free D8. That's, yeah. yeah. Once per turn, too. Oh, yeah, that's way better. It is a smaller die than your superiority die, but that's a reasonable trade-off. Why would that? Yeah, for a guarantee once per round, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so, yeah, uh, pretty happy with Battlemaster. They changed the biggest ability that sucked balls, and the rest of Battlemaster was pretty good, so. Yeah. Uh, now we have Champion, the most boring subclass, but got the coolest art, arguably. It did, yeah. <laughs> Braided big, big buff mommy with Vorpal Swords, pretty sick. <laughs> uh, hey, yo, the perspective on that hand looking a little, uh, little wonky. <laughs> Her hand do look a little small, a little, little weird. Um, a little flat. Yeah, that's all right. Look, it, hands suck, artists. I'm not. I'm not calling you. I mean, I, it is a call out, but like, yes, I, I'm there, bud. We get it. Uh, <laughs> Every artist is like, fucking, peace to my homie. <laughs> so, uh, improved critical, same. Remarkable athlete. Now, a little bit better. Um, you have advantage on initiative rolls and athletic checks. In addition, immediately after you score a critical hit, you can move up to half your speed without provoking opportunity attacks. So, remarkable athlete feeling, you know, more, more betterer. Yeah. 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 Uh, you also get a, an additional fighting style at level seven, which you previously got at level ten, which I honestly forgot that champion got another fighting style. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that either. <laughs> Mostly because that's not really a useful ability, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I mean, you you can use some, like, if you take a champion and then do, um, like, defense and then armored. And you're you're kind of cocktail balling because your ACs are going to be through the fucking roof. But, or sorry, uh, defense and um, dueling. I guess. Not I, there's a couple that you can cup that, that, that will go together. Yeah, that there's a few that kind of go but. together, yeah. Um, in addition, you get access to a new feature at level 10 called Heroic Warrior. Uh, so Heroic Warrior, the thrill of battle drives you towards victory. During combat, you can give yourself heroic inspiration whenever you start your turn without. Holy shit. That's actually a lot better that than one, I thought it, it was. It's No, it's very powerful. That's really strong, actually. <laughs> that is the only ability that I was like, I might play a champion. <laughs> That's kind of wild, too. My because now the way uh, heroic inspiration works is it lets you reroll any die you want. So, yeah. I kind of like the idea of you just keep take and I know you technically can't, but like uh just keep taking the ba- the the fighting style feat over not the fighting style, the uh, maneuver feat over and over again. <laughs> You're just a champion with a bunch of maneuvers. Uh I mean, you could take it. I think you can take it a few times, can't you? Can't you you can't. No, I ch- oh. I, t- I I checked this, and it's Fair one enough. of the dumbest ones where it's like, oh no, you can only take it once. Like, right? but their maneuvers, they're not that powerful. Why? Mm. Okay, game. Uh, and then superior critical, you can crit on an eighteen. Uh, survivor, you gain advantage on death saves. Also, when you roll an eighteen to twenty on a death save, you gain the benefit of rolling on a twenty, which is. This is pretty funny. I like that champions like just refuses to die. Yeah. And then heroic rally at the start of each of your turns, you regain hit points equal to five plus your con mod if you are bloodied and have at least one hit. Uh, Because bloodied is a thing they brought back, by the way. Thank God. Please. Yeah. Please do something with that in the future. Wizard, please do more with the bloodied condition. It's such a it's such a good little game design. It's just a good little nugget. Just please. Yes. Eldritch Knight. Still a disappointment in the family. They yeah. improved slightly. They went from being uh they went from having no job to like, you know, working at a gas station, you know what I'm saying? Uh some small changes. Um they are not limited, I believe, anymore on their spell schools, just like the uh the the rogue one is. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. The Eldritch Knight art is really sick, actually. Um, their Warbond ability... I don't... Does that change anything? Um, da -da -da. Eldritch Knight is no longer limited to abjuration, abjuration and evocation schools for their spell choices. Also, instead of getting an attack once as a bonus action, you can cast a cantrip as an... When you cast a cantrip, you can simply replace one attack with a cantrip. Uh, that's kind of a minutia change, but it is, you know, useful. Um, two extra attacks, improved more magic, follows this trend, requires you to forego two attacks to cast a level one or two spell. Yeah, it just let them cast a little bit more. That's kind of it. Wait, and so wait, 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 hold on. Is it, do you have to still burn a spell slot or do you just get to cast spells? Uh... You can replace two of the attacks with the casting one in it. I think you still use a spell slot. I don't think it doesn't say you don't, so yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh because otherwise that would be wacky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, wait, is it me or does the Eldritch Knight art kind of look like a fucking dragoon from 14? A little bit. A little bit. With a tricorn. With a tricorn, yeah. Uh, when you take the attack action on your turn, you place one of your attacks with casting on your wizard cantrips. Eldritch Strike, you learn how to make your weapon strikes undercut, blah, blah, blah. When you hit a creature with an attack using a weapon, the creature has disadvantage on the next saving throw. It makes it against a spell you cast before. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't, wait, how is that even? Oh, I guess you could give disadvantage on the, the cantrips that require a save, so you could, like, hit it and then shh. Shocking? No, not shocking. Grasp. Is shocking grasp a save? I don't. Know. No. Acid splash. Which ones are saves? Acid splash. Sure. Yeah. Okay. You could acid splash. Acid splash. Thunderclap. Um. Okay. Booming blade, but that's not in the PHB. I was gonna um, say booming blade, not in there. Yeah. Sure. Elder Knight still sucks. <laughs> Yeah, it's not great. Um, there's a part of me that wants to play it just to play it, but it does still kind of. Uh, Psy Warrior, unchanged. <laughs> I think I'm no, not surprised. Psy Warrior is cool. It's fine. I don't love it. I'll, I'll be. I I don't really like the. It's weird because, like, as a Star Wars fan, you would think I would like Psy Warrior, but I kind of don't like Psy Warrior. I feel the exact same way. Something about it. I'm like, I mean, it's not bad. It's just like, I don't know. I just don't vibe with it for some reason. I don't really know what it is. I can't really explain it. But yeah. Yeah. Questions, comments, concerns on the fighter? No, no, not really. I, I pretty much agree across the board. Yeah, I mean, Side like, Warrior is cool, but like also. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I said, a fighter is better. 100%. It's better. Um, but could it have changed more? I mean, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can I just say, by the way, this might be a little bit of a hot take, I th I'm thinking. A lot of people are like, man, the art for 2024 has been amazing. And what I will say is, yes, comma, However, there's an aspect of it I don't like. And Interesting. That is the fact that all of the art, so all of the art they did, they went with uh what's the what's the phrase I'm looking for? So like all of the shots of the classes and the subclasses and stuff are full it's a full character in a scene, right? Mm -hmm. So the fighter, oh, right? Are you talking about the weird framing that they're both in and out of? So I don't mind that they're in and out of it. That's cool. I, but the art. So I guess my problem is more of a it's it's not the art itself. It's the layout of the art. Yeah, yeah. Because we're gonna have the same point. All of the art is sectioned away into boxes because they decided to make all of the art bespoke 
shots or scenes of characters as mm-hmm. opposed to just a character or a object. And they're standing in full background shots with like a full epic piece, which is fine for the like the class introductions. I think that makes sense. But my problem is that the old PHB had little bits of art kind of all over the pages. Like, it, yeah, it looked like a field guide, like some like a journal yeah, that someone was writing. It looks like a where journal. They would make sketches. Yeah, because there's little bits that aren't bordered off in a section. It's just like a drawing on its own sitting next to like a little, you know, just a little block of text or whatever. So, like, if you look at the um, is it the I think it's the Dragonborn. Hold on, let me pull it up real quick. There's a little the Dragonborn s- Archer. Uh, no, there's a little section. In the dra- Yeah, there's a little bit at the bottom towards the bottom of the Dragonborn where it has like a dragon mask and a little chest with gold in it and stuff. And I just always really like that because it feels like random little Dragonborn artifacts. They're just kind of slapped on the page in a way that, like you said, yeah, it feels like a field guide, like a guy noticed these or found these or something like that and just kind of threw them in his journal, like sketched them really quick. Whereas the 2024 art all feels very like bespoke art pieces that were then injected into the book. Yes. Which is a little weird. Or like the elf section has the little elf statue and the butterfly and the little leaf looking dagger. Like I'm literally looking at it right now. Like the art feels like intertwined with the text. Whereas in 2024, the art is the art, the text is describing the art, but the art is sort of sectioned off more so. Which, I don't know, is starting to bug me the more I'm seeing. It's really funny that we shared a single brain cell on this. Like, we? Oh, okay. like it's cool, but like it's bugging me. <laughs> it's bugging me that it, bo- you know, it's funny is early on in the 2024 book, there's a bunch of the sketchy like pencil art work that feels more mm-hmm. integrated in a way that I like because it doesn't have any borders and it kind of bleeds into areas and like the sketchy stuff looks really cool. I like that a lot. Like the like pencil drawn work. And it's not colored in or anything. So, yeah. They, they sort of, yeah, they, they took a very specific direction that initially I was into and now I'm feeling a little like maybe I'm not actually into this. Well, so that's what the weird, right? In early on in like the trinkets section, we're getting that old stuff where you get the key, the bloodstone yeah. and the tooth necklace. And then you get the mask, the fucking mechanical goldfish and the brooch. And you're like, oh, those are like old. And then, yeah, the, the pencil drawings you're like, oh, that's the old like PHB that I know and love. Yeah. And it just it se- it almost seems like two different people like designed this book and maybe did not talk to each other as much as they probably should have. I don't think it was that. I think it I think what it was, was that the. um like class section was supposed to invoke a different feel. Like I think they wanted to feel like the sections of the book were d- different parts. Like when you get to the class section, the art direction changes a little, so you realize it's like a different bit. You know what I mean? I think that was the intention. Maybe actually. So quick shout out to art I really like is the fiend warlock art, mm. or sorry, the celestial warlock art. Who it, it's like a, a shamanistic. Warlock that has vitilago, but it's in the shape of like flower petals. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. That's the thing. Like each of the individual pieces I like, but they, yeah, the way they put them onto the page feels a little weird. Some, not all of it, but some of it. Also, a uh, shout out to that same uh, warlock having like a straight up, like just a normal arming sword. Nice. <laughs> nice. Also, the fucking the fiend warlock with the long straight, uh, the fiend. The, the tiefling with like the long straight white hair You're just yes. Like, yes yes big sephiroth energy yeah yeah um anyway yeah this is not none of this is important but i just yeah that was just like a thing i noticed kind of i don't know it, it did a, it 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 made my brain do a thinky you know i don't know yeah no i look i completely agree again it's weird that we had the same brain on that one it is funny we had a similar thought on it. Um, all right. A cleric. 
one of my favorite classes in the entire game. Like second or third spot for me. What's up with the cleric? Um, I, I think I'm pretty much happy with everything with the cleric. I don't, I don't know about you, but yeah, no, I, I, I genuinely can't think of a single thing. This is one of those things where I, it's like, so I will cleric, say perfect dub <laughs> fighter good. But like, what, what are we, what are we doing? <laughs> we got a little, we got a little wobbly in the middle there. Yeah. I mean, I will say this. I initially was no buenas with the divine intervention change. But Mr. Crawford, Crawfish Saint, did kind of turn me around on that one when he explained mm. it. So we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so Cleric at level one. So you don't get your subclass anymore because everyone gets their subclass at level three. So instead, you kind of pick a style of cleric. You're either a protector or a thaumaturge. If you're a protector, you get uh, proficiency with martial weapons and training with heavy armor. If you're a thaumaturge, you get extra cantrips uh, and a bonus to arcana religion checks equal to your wisdom modifier. So it's like, do you want to play casty, cl casty cleric or smacky cleric? Uh, which is kind of a thing the subclasses were doing before, but they all of that stuff they sort of took out of the subclasses and then kind of threw into the base cleric here, which I like that. I, I think that's. I think that's probably a good idea because now you could play like a, you know, a life cleric or no life cleric. God, what's like a you could play like a trickery cleric, but wear heavy armor or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that, that that's fun. I like the little mix and match you can do there. Uh, level two, you get your channel divinities, which I think was the same as before, right? Or no? Yes. Is it? Hold on. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you get Divine Spark. So you actually get a second. I believe before you only got Turn Undead initially, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. No, at level two, you got Turn Undead and, and one from your Run, domain. Right, right, right. You got one from your subclass, but you don't have that anymore, right? So now you get... No. Uh, Divine Spark, which as a magic action, you can, your, you can focus your divine energy towards a creature you can see within 30 feet of yourself. Then you can choose to heal or harm them. You roll a D8 and add your wisdom modifier. If you're choosing heal, they recover hit points. Uh, this ability scales up as you gain levels. So 2D8, 3D8, 4D8. You can also force a creature to make a con save throw and deal that number of your choice in radiant or necrotic damage if they fail to save. So you get like a little magic bolt thing you can use with your channel divinity uh which is fun uh because it can heal or harm and then you still get turn undead um but they change turn undead a little bit uh or no they change turn they change the later version of turn undead yeah i think they changed the later version um Specific creatures who fail their save against your channel divinity have a frightened and incapacitated condition for one minute. It still uses its movement to get as far away from you as possible, uh, but it no longer uses its action to dash thanks to thanks to the incapacitated condition. So they like can't do anything, but they still like run away. From you. So a little bit of a change mm -hmm. on that one. Level three. Ah, I think Seer Undead is what I was thinking of. Um, so Seer Undead, uh, with Seer Undead, whenever you use your channel divinity to turn undead, you can roll the number of d8s equal to your wisdom modifier. Each undead, regardless of their CR level, uh, that failed to save against your turn undead suffers radiant damage equal to your roll and the turn undead all and the turn undead effect also remains in place. So basically at level five, your turn undead becomes guaranteed useful, whereas before it was useful if it worked and fucking did nothing if it didn't. Yeah. Which after a certain point, that was the case. <laughs> yes. So now turn undead basically will actually continue to do its goddamn job later on in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause yeah, that was one of those abilities that like kind of fell off unless for some reason your GM was throwing lower level undead at you, which I, most of them don't, I feel like. Yeah, most of them would not be at that point, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then you get Blessed Strikes. 
Um, and you have to choose your blessed strikes. Either you can take divine strike, which is once per turn when you hit a creature with a weapon attack roll, you deal an extra eight 1d8 of your choice of radiant or necrotic damage. I'd like to take a moment to point out that that's a bigger die than Hunter's Mark. Just saying. Yep. It's a bigger, uh-huh. it's a bigger die than Hunter's Mark. Do with that information what you will. Uh, take this opportunity. You can pause the video and just scream. Just scream as loud as you can. Yes. Just get it out now. I already did my scream. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we, both, we, like, we both preempted this episode by just <laughs> roaring into the Tempest for like five minutes straight. I, I probably must have gotten at least three noises. <sighs> but yeah. Um, take so, time to do it now. Yes, you can get a better Hunter's Mark or you can do potent spell casting, which is where you add your wisdom modifier damage to any cleric cantrip. So again, you're basically making a cho- choice of bonk cleric or spell casty cleric, which is good. I think something that's particularly good about this is I feel like bonky cleric, you know, the cleric with the hammer, which in my opinion is the better choice. But I feel like bonk cleric was just mechanically the better choice before whereas now I feel like you can actually spread out and have a little more casty cleric energy you know yeah so that's nice so divine intervention I think I should I think I'm just going to read this whole couple of paragraphs verbatim um, because divine intervention got a big change and my initial so uh, uh, me and Isaiah have both agreed Divine Intervention is like one of the coolest abilities in the game. And they have changed yes. it quite a bit. And initially, I, w- I fucking hated it, but I thought about it. I mold on it. The Craw Priest explained it, and I think I've kind of come around. So let me just read this whole goddamn thing out. So, few features... <laughs> quote... <laughs> Few features in D&D live at the perfect intersection of flavorfully cool but functionally frustrating as 2014 Divide Intervention. I would agree with that sentence, yes. Because it required the use of percentile dice, the odds of it actually working were usually fairly slim. And when it did, the feature was written in such a way that it was a bit too vague. Sure, I could see that, yep. (laughs) This led to a lot of discussion of how it would work in the moment the, the... effect often boiled down to the effect of a cleric spell so the difficulty of using it and the seven day delay and even attempting it again added up to a pretty steep barrier for entry of ultimately middling impact i feel like if you were a gm that you were just effectively giving the like if you were just like oh you just basically cast this spell you were kind of missing the point of divine intervention i'm gonna be honest okay wait i i have a a small Uh, story because this relates okay so I did a I did a one shot with Lupo like a year and two years ago, uh-huh, uh, right? Uh-huh. And we got three magic items uh, of like varying rarities. Oh, I think I remember this story. I, I may have told this on podcast, but if not, I'm going to tell it again because it it's uh-huh. very funny. Uh, so he, he sent me a text prior to session because I was playing a uh, I was playing a a fighter like a, like a religious like, oh, no, I was playing a paladin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. OK. And he was like, I'll make you a deal. I'll give you this pendant that gives you a use of divine intervention. But it'll take up one of your items. Like, you just can't have a third item. I was like, yeah, that sounds fucking sick and then fun as shit. Yeah, we'll give that a try. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the uh, at the final fight, we were fighting like a huge pit fiend. And I was like, time to break this bad boy out. Uh huh. And he's like, mm, yes, your divine intervention casts hex at ninth level and i was like but that doesn't that doesn't increase the damage it just increases how long it lasts he was like yes nice okay good to know i wasted that <laughs> yeah yeah i was honestly i wasn't even mad i just kind of chuckled to myself and was like yeah fair enough basically basically if you were the kind of gm who was doing that kind of thing and not realizing you were doing it like you, you were kind of missing the point of divine intervention uh yeah i mean i think I, I i know people hate to do this but i think the 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 best i've seen divine intervention and i, I haven't watched that many actual plays to be fair but I have watched a decent amount, and I think the best one is, is just the Matt Mercer when they're fighting the dragon and the giant, a, like a god fist comes in, puts the knocks the dragon prone when it's flying away. 
I mean, that it is, does like an ass load of damage and then holds the dragon down. You're like, that's that's perfect. That's great. I mean, you could make an argument that that's just also casting a high level spell to some degree. But yes, that is a, still a fun effect. I would. Agree. Well, yeah, I mean, sort uh, of. You so, could make an argument that it's it's casting like uh, a skybind, but it also did an ass load of damage. And when you're fighting a monster yes. that's kicking your ass, you know, you can do with an ass load of damage. This is true. So the 2024 interve- divine intervention takes a big step up in clarity and functionality. The feature now allows a player to choose any cleric level of fifth level or lower that doesn't require a reaction to cast, and you can cast it without expending a spell slot or material components, which is particularly good because that means you can get like a free revivify, for example. Uh, The seven day delay in using it again is gone now as well, meaning you can invoke divine intervention again after completing a long rest. The changes to divine intervention really emphasize the 2024 cleric's role as a conduit to the chosen god, blah, 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 giving them ostensibly a once per day ability to pack a powerful punch or pull a spell like Revivify, as I just said, in a clutch moment, plays into the spirit of the feature while also providing a mechanic that feels like it can be actively used. So, yeah, basically, they took away this like percentile stipulation bit of the ability and said you can cast a fifth level cleric spell which initially might not sound great but the thing that you realize is oh fifth level cleric spells gives me a lot of spell options and i can throw something else for free that's pretty solid that is pretty solid and then you might say but josh but but divine intervention before you could do like anything the fuck you wanted well you still can no, well, you still you, can uh, you- You could do anything the fuck your DM wanted. (laughs) Which you still can at level 20. So we'll get there. So just tuck that, tuck that away. So at level 10, it's guaranteed to work once per day, but it's limited to your spell list. Okay. At level 14, you get uh, improved Blessed Strikes, which is just an upgrade to the uh, previous Blessed Strikes. uh, Extra damage. For the cleric, so extra damage for the physical hit with the radiant or necrotic damage goes up to 2d8. Um, Hunter's marks a d10 at level 20 for, for ranger. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, mm-hmm. but the, the cleric gets 2d8 radiant damage or necrotic yep. when you hit a creature once per turn. Master of combat, Josh. Master of combat. Master the of ranger's com- supposed to be a master of combat. Master of combat. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, or you could choose the potent, uh. <laughs> or you can choose potent spell casting, which is when you deal the damage with the cleric cantrip, you gain temporary hit points equal to cl- twice your wisdom modifier to yourself or another creature within sixty feet of you, uh, which I like because I particularly like that because spell casty cleric also probably means you're going to be more of the healy cleric. So this is adding into your healing ability. So, yes, that's cool. Uh, level mm-hmm. 19, of course, you have your epic boon as always. Uh, they recommend the boon of fate, which uh, you can add 2d4 to a d20 roll. Sure, whatever. Level it used 20. to be a d10. I don't fucking know. Well, actually, it's a, so 2d4 is better because you're getting better curve. You're, yeah, you're getting a better curve because you're going to get a median of two yep. on each. Like, that's the medium roll. So you're going to get plus four. It's not great, but although I, I don't know, kind of. I don't really like a lot of the epic boons. They're just kind of whatever. Some of them are cool, like the you just auto hit, but they're, other ones are just like, eh. They're okay. Yeah. Um, Frankly, if you want cool epic boons, this is just a little tip for all you GMs out there. There's an article on GM Binder that has like 30 epic boons. And including the old ones, and they've just revamped a lot of them, and they're really cool. There's one called, like, Aspect of a Demigod. It just pushes your stat to a 30. You're like, fuck yeah, that's awesome. I think a lot of play, a lot of people would be concerned about using that for overpowered didness, but, you know. It's level 20, who cares? Uh, fair enough. Um, level 20, the cleric now gets greater divine intervention. So, what this used they to do... did the do, greater thing again. They did do that <laughs> Well, no, actually, wait, actually, Isaiah, do you know what it used to be called? Oh, no. It I used don't. to be called Divine Intervention Improvement. <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's really funny, actually. <laughs> and a scrim. <laughs> Bro, I'm finna commit. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, so what what their level 20 used to be was uh, at level 20, your your divine intervention succeeds automatically. No role required. That's how it used to work. Now in 2024, at level 10, since it succeeds automatically, okay, what's the upgraded version? You could, if you've been playing any amount of D&D, I bet you could guess what they're going to do with this. They did the thing I fucking hate again. But fine. It's fine. Because at least it's a cool spell. Yeah. But they did do the thing I hate. So... The level 20 version of Divine Intervention for the 2024 cl Cleric truly leans into the idea of your Cleric being your god's most special princess. Now, your Cleric can use a Divine Intervention to cast the Wish spell. The features of the Wish spell are largely similar uh, in the 2024 Player's Handbook, so the complication that can result from using it and the toll that it takes on the caster's body and health, blah blah blah, fit the mold, yada yada. After using Divine Intervention to cast Wish, you'll need to wait 2d4 long rest before using it. So, basically, they get a free cast of Wish at level 20. Which, if this was any other spell, I would have been pissed. But because it's the Wish... Furious. Yes. Malding, even. <laughs> but because it's the Wish spell, and Wish basically does the same thing that divine intervention did before i'll take it i'll take it it's a compromise not the compromise i personally would have gone with in terms of divine intervention but a compromise that i accept and i am okay with at the end of the day like i said initially when i heard this i was mad but i thought about it and i went you know what Guaranteed at level 10 every day, once a day, get to cast any spell you want. And then at level 20, you cast the wish spell. That's pretty cool. And if you roll really well, you could use the wish spell again in two days. No spell slots required. No roll of if it, the other thing is there's no chance of it failing or whatever. You just use it. So fine, I'll take it. Well, so I, I still think you could sweeten this pot a little bit by you just could. giving the first ever cast of, of fight intervention. Just give them the wish spell anyway. Like level 10. Here's a free wish. You could. You could. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the wish spell has a bunch of like stipulations and shit brought, put into it already. So like, yeah, it does. Yeah. And, well, that's the funny thing, right? It's like, oh, you can do it at a minimum of two days. Well, it still takes four days to recover from all that fucking exhaustion. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, it matters. If you cast Wish in two days, it's going to actually kill you. I mean. Oh, yeah, that's true, I suppose, huh? Yeah, it, it gives it gives straight up exhaustion. Wait a minute. It gives you four points of exhaustion if you use it on anything other than the eight, level eight or below spells. Oh, I didn't know about that. Or I forgot about that. I think I forgot about that. So if you if you use it to mimic spells level eight and below, no repercussions. Right, right. Freebie spell cast. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Ninth and up are our ninth or actual wishes. Immediate for exhaustion. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what if you wished that you couldn't die of exhaustion? <laughs> Take that up with your DM. You're just going to like you're there on the ground, like you dehydrate looking like a hollow from Dark Souls one. Just no. No. you good, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Choking, coughing, sputtering. Uh, all right. So, what subclasses did we get with cleric? With Clarice, uh, cleric has like I think the most subclasses of any class. So there was no scenario where somebody wasn't going to be disappointed. Um, yeah. So we got the life domain, the light domain, the trickery domain, and the war domain. Um, I, real quick, ironically, these are all my favorite domains anyway, baby. Let's go. Right. That's good. Um, <laughs> I would have liked to see Twilight, personally. I uh, it's in Tasha's. It's it, I don't see it changing much. That's true. That's true. Um, knowledge. I would have also maybe liked. Also nature. I really would have liked nature. Actually, that's probably my number one that I would have liked to see change. Because nature was just kind of whatever before. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Um, Have you noticed that all of the druid, like the druid adjacent subclasses are never good? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> Archfey. Yeah. It's just fucking <laughs> Misty Step. Ancients. Well, eh. Ancients is better now for sure. 
it's it's better now, but like I'm talking like you know Art's previous. Also better. Yes, true. They're better now, but they were not. They were not. I I, I will say. Side note: the backwards compatibilityness of clerics is going to be a little awkward because like blessed strikes and shit like that was sort of baked into subclasses and stuff before i don't know how that's going also like armor proficiencies was baked into subclass for cleric before whereas now it's in the base cleric so there's a couple of things yeah. that are going to be like kind of nullified if you want to use an older subclass so hopefully they yeah well, i mean them. here's the thing right when they were like it's gonna be backwards compatible and then we're starting to get some material it's like well, that was a fucking lie, kind of. No, I mean, like, not entirely a lie, but it's say, not. It wasn't entirely, entirely the truth. It's just there's certain things that are gonna work better than others. I kind of expect this is pretty much what I expected. I wasn't surprised by the degree of backwards compatibleness. Oh, I, me neither. If you were, I, I don't know what to tell you, but I just I said literally said this on podcast, right? They're redesigning the game. There's no way it's gonna fit like a glove. No, I mean, certain things are going to fit better than ours. But yes, I'm just I'm just pointing out cleric might be one of those places where the game gets a little a little funky. It's still use. You can still use old cleric subclasses. They will work. You just might have to figure out. There's a couple of abilities where you might be like either A, I'll just ignore this or B. I don't know. Maybe I'll think of something else or whatever, you know, but they'll still work. Uh, anyway, uh, life domain. Uh, I mean, life domain is the Healy cleric. It's uh, still the Healy cleric. Um, so disciple of life and preserve life got moved to level three because that's when you get your subclasses. Um, your domain spells, uh, bless. So uh, what do you get for the, let me look at the full list actually. Um, no, not not that, not that, that. uh, life domain. You get aid, bless, Cure Wounds, Lesser Restoration, Mass Healing Word, Revivify, Aura of Life, Death Ward, Greater Resto, and Mass Cure Wounds. Um, so they added, what was it? Uh, they added Lesser Resto and Aid. Um, used to get Spiritual Weapon? Wait a minute, Life Domain got Spiritual Weapon before? As a Domain spell? You did get Spiritual yeah, that Weapon. Is, that doesn't yeah, make any fucking yeah. sense, what? <laughs> no. I yeah uh, weird they they changed it's fine so light domain got life used to get flaming life. sphere no no I know I'm saying light got oh, flaming okay. light domain is really funny because it's 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 the fire like, domain really holy magical light but what it's actually is is like burn the heretics yeah yeah, yeah. it's exactly <laughs> what it, yeah it's actually burn the nerds um uh where was I it? lost my train of thought uh. Disciple of Life is now restricted to only the turn that you cast the spell, and you can now use Preserve Life on Undead or Constructs. I think you can now do all healing on Undead or Constructs. Um, I believe so, yes. Yeah, I think they took all that stipulation away, which I don't love. If I'm honest. No, I don't either. Don't worry. Um, it's so... Wait. Uh, Disciple of Life is only restricted to... What was the Disciple of Life ability again? You cast a spell, the spell slot that restores hit points to a creature. That creature regains additional hit points on the turn. You cast the spell. The additional hit points equal to two plus the spell slot. Level. Oh, I guess. I guess if there was healing that wasn't on the turn. That's OK. Sure. Fine. A weird wording, but OK. Um, the light domain, otherwise known as the burn the heretics domain. <laughs> Is, you're right. That is absolutely the domain the of the Inquisition. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Um. Uh, let's see. Okay, so obviously the stuff they got at level one bumped up to level three. Sea invisibility replaces flaming sphere as a light domain spell. Uh, I guess they're trying to be a little bit less burn the heretics. Uh, but they still get fireball at level five. You say they they still get fireball. And so yeah. Also, you could just use divine intervention to cast flaming sphere. <laughs> True. Actually, True, no. Wait, you can. No, no, you can't. It has to be a cleric spell. I lie. I'm a liar. I'm a filthy. Liar. Oh, that's right. It's not a cleric spell. Not mm. a cleric spell. So no, you can't actually. Well, you could well, use. Well, you your could level. use it to cast fireball at fifth level. You could. You could. You could cast um, flaming sphere once you got to level twenty. And you can use it. Yeah, all right. Um, it could cast like a 
ninth level or an eighth level flaming sphere. It's pretty good. Um, Warding Flare works on uh, works on other creatures from the start instead of just yourself. Uh, oh yeah, because that used to be an upgraded. Ver- it used to be you could defend yourself and then you get a better version that works on other creatures. Now improved Warding Flare when you regain all uses of your Warding Flare. Uh, you regain all uses of your warding flare when you finish a short or long rest. In addition, whenever you use your warding flare, you can give the target of the triggering attack a number of temporary hit points equal to 2d6 plus your wisdom mod. So warding flare just better. Now. Um, yeah. And Corona of Light, which imposes disadvantage against... Radiance of the Dawn, as well as spells dealing fire or radiant damage. Let me just read this one. Uh, as a magic action, you cause yourself to emit an aura of light, an aura of sunlight that lasts for one minute or uh, until you dismiss it. Uh, you emit bright light in a 60 foot radius and dim light for an additional 30 feet. Your enemies in the bright light have disadvantage on saving throws against your radiance of the dawn and any spells that deal fire or radiant damage. Ah, so you just make everyone vulnerable to scorching them. So they are still kind of the burn the heretic. <laughs> yeah, not beating the allegations. No, not really, not really. Because uh, Radiance of the Dawn, you present your holy symbol and it use a channel divinity to emit a flash of light and 30 foot emanation originating from yourself. Magical darkness is dispersed. Additionally, each creature of your choice in the area must make a con save or take radiant damage equal to 2d10 plus your cleric level. Yeah, you're just burning them with holy light. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trickery domain. Uh, trickery domain, honestly, before kind of sucked massive balls. Now, kind of usable. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, Blessing of the Trickster can now be used on yourself, and it lasts until you finish a long rest instead of one hour, um, which is the one that... Uh, you can choose yourself or a creature within 30 feet of you to have advantage on stealth checks. And you give yourself permanent advantage, basically. Uh, which is cool. Uh, I don't... I mean, the... I... Can you, wait, can you give it to... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah. You're gonna get, you're gonna use this on your rogue, because why would you sneak around as the cleric? But anyway. Um, invoke Duplicity now takes a bonus action instead of an action and no longer requires concentration, which makes that ability so much more usable Way than better. it was before. <laughs> yeah. God damn, did that ability suck before. <laughs> yeah, one of those, again, one of those fantastic for flavor, but like kind of dog water. Yeah. Uh, you actually because you made, it. yeah, you made like a duplicate of yourself and it distracted attacks and shit. And you could cast stuff through it. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you got uh, for domain spells, invisibility replaces mirror image. Yep, makes sense. Kind of weird they didn't have invisibility. Hypnotic pattern and non detection replace blink, sure, and dispel magic. I feel like they should maybe keep dispel magic, but all right. Confusion replaces polymorph. They had polymorph before? They did. I only know this what? because it came up in fucking a critical role campaign, too. The trickery domain had polymorph. What the hell? Okay. Sure. Uh, and then at level 17, your illusion grants advantage to you and your allies when you attack a creature within five feet of it. And the and when the illusion ends, you can grant a number of hit points equal to your cleric level to a creature within five feet of it, or within five feet of it. Uh, so that's not bad. So trickery domain much more usable now. Still not really a domain I think I would give a shit about, I don't know, the sneaky deaky cleric I'm kind of like, whatever about uh, but much better now, for sure well, the most important domain, war domain the best domain correct <laughs> you can now make an unarmed strike with a bonus action conferred by the war priest feature, which I mean not a huge deal, but funny that you can like cast spell and then cast fist immediately after <laughs> I, it doesn't seem to do any uh, more damage, though. No, which is, it doesn't, which is why it's not that useful, but it is still funny. Yeah, I... Uh, or does, yeah, wait, weird. hold on. Uh, you can make an attack with a weapon or you can use it, but yeah, no, it doesn't do any more. But it is still funny that you can do it. Um, 
and you regain all use as a war priest after a short or long rest. Also, Guiding Bolt, Fire Shield, and Steel Wind Strike replace Divine Favor, Stone Skin, and Flame Strike. Oh, I kind of like Flame Strike. Um, but Steel Wind Strike is very cool, so that's fine. <laughs> it's it, it's literally fucking Virgil. It is, um, yes. Judgment Cuts. So yeah, no, I, yes. uh, I'm good with that. Finally, the level six feature War God's Blessing has been changed from a bonus to an attack roll and now allows you to cast Shield of Faith or Spiritual Weapon without a spell slot and without concentration. Yeah. Uh, so Spiritual Weapon is a concentration now, but War Domain can ignore that. Which is fun. I like that. Um, I, another thing that's worth pointing out. So Avatar of Battle, their level 17 thing. Um, let me check the old one real quick on the wording there. Uh, it is the same. Yeah. OK, er, so Avatar Battle used to. Well, it's actually slightly different. So Avatar Battle level 17 used to say you gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing and slashing damage from non magical attacks, right? Now it says mm -hmm. you gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing and slashing damage, period. And it seems like from all of the evidence we've had from the bits of like magic weapons and spells and a little bit of monster stat block stuff we've seen, it seems like the concept of magic damage has basically been removed from the game. So this ability, Avatar of Battle, which arguably was kind of shit and useless before because at level 17, everything had fucking magical weapons. So it didn't fucking matter. Now actually it's more matters. Shit and useless now. Yeah. Now it now. It oh, matters. no, I, I say I think it just sounds more shit and useless now because it's no, I no think. I think it. so, because I feel like like all magic shit is just doing force damage now. So like, well, no, no, no. Think about it, though. You the old one was you gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing and slashing damage from non magical attacks. So like if the Baylor huh? hits you with his sword, it didn't matter that you had resistance because it was a magical sword, right? Now the Baylor hits you with your with his sword. You have resistance to the to the slashing damage. You know what I'm saying? I suppose. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I, I guess we'll have to like really see how much force comes into things because I feel like they're that's just becoming the well. So yes, force fun. force is becoming kind of the replacement. But if you t again, if you take some, so like a Baylor's long sword does three d eight plus eight slashing damage and then three d eight lightning damage. So you wouldn't resist the lightning damage, but you would resist the slashing damage from the sword. Whereas in 2014, you would resist none of that damage because it's magical. Mm -hmm. Get what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Now this ability actually, I think, is going to be much more useful. You're not going to resist everything, but it's much more useful than it was. So, yes, if, if, if things work the way that, that you're assuming, yes, it's going to be much more it seems useful. to be like based on everything else we've seen it seems like that's the case the fact that nothing like there is no language on any of the classes that says uh oh your attacks are now considered like the beastmaster ranger right used to have oh your beast attacks are now considered magical for overcoming resistance that language is gone right so like nothing has that phrasing anymore now I think it I think the beat I think the beat I think the beast does force damage now if I believe if I remember correctly. I'm gonna check real quick. I'm pretty sure it does. If my computer would uh, hello? Woo! Computer was having a moment there. Uh, let me find it. Oh, well, that's not what we were trying to do. Computer, please. Please hold while I consult the Necronomicon. Uh, we're scrolling and we're scrolling and we're scrolling and okay, Beastmaster. Um, was it exceptional training? I think so. Uh, da, 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 you can also da, da, da. in addition, whenever it hits with an attack roll and deals damage, it can deal your uh, it can deal your choice of force damage or its normal damage. Yeah. So, yeah, anything that was like and like the monk now says instead of magical damage, you deal force damage. So like, yeah. So. That seems like a pretty good buff. It basically, War Domain seems even cooler. <laughs> and if you're really, if you're one of those people who's really, really bothered by the fact that spiritual weapon is concentration, play a War Domain cleric and your problem is solved. Yep. Mostly. Mostly solved. I mean, not 100%, but mostly. I'm personally not that bothered by the spiritual weapon change. I get it. 
Yeah. Because honestly, the combo of spirit, spirit guardians and spiritual weapon was kind of fuck busted. Yeah, I, I mean, it was yeah. very strong. I think personally, I will say, I think Baldur's Gate actually did a better version of spiritual weapon than this. But, you know, whatever. Uh, I haven't used it yet in Baldur's Gate, please. So in Baldur's Gate, the way it works is when you summon the spiritual weapon, it the spiritual weapon is an NPC that gets added to the initiative counter. R- oh, and yeah, it has yeah, health. So monsters can attack the spiritual weapon and destroy it, but it has its own initiative. I feel like that's a cooler solution, personally. And I would have liked that, I'll be honest. But they made a concentration instead, which I understand. So, you know. Mm. You can't get everything you want, you know? Uh, That's Cleric. Basically W's. W's across the board. The one spot that I was maybe a little in debate about, I I have come over, uh, so I, I I don't think I have any complaints. I mean, cleric was also one of those classes where it was like arguably one of the best class design classes already, anyway. So like, yeah, I mean, I, I would go as far as say it was the best class in 2014, and so like it didn't need a ton of adjusting anyway. So the bits of none. changing it got solid. Yeah, the fact that we got any, you're like, let's go. Yeah. And and also, if you're the kind of person who's really annoyed about the divine intervention changes, super easy to just swap in the old version or just to homebrew the current version and make it a little bit different, you know? So, like, mm-hmm. overall, not a huge upset. Uh, Yeah. So, fighter and cleric. Uh, looking uh, pretty cool. I already wanted to play more clerics. So uh, now I just want to play more clerics. Yeah, I was going to say cleric looking pretty cool. Fighter looking OK. I still think fighter is looking overall cool and better than it was. So, like, I'm going to take that bl- that W. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you can take it. Uh, it's fun. Yeah. Also, speaking of cleric subclasses, I really want to see uh, grave domain. Grave domain is cool. Definitely want to see that one, especially because one of the grave domains abilities is now completely useless. Oh, which one? Uh, so they had that ability where um, they could cast. Uh, what was it? Uh, where is it? Oh, jeez. Uh, in addition, you learn spare the dying, which doesn't count. And for you, it has a range of 30 feet. Spare the dying now just has a range of 30 feet by default. Oh, Lamau. That's yeah. Fun. So that ability just kind of goes out the window. I mean, they, it's a small thing for them. So it's like it's not a huge deal, but it is kind of funny that it just completely no- negates that bit. Yeah, I mean, you could give it another 30 feet. You could. Yeah, you could just make it longer range for sure. I think also the new version of Spare the Dying, the range increases if you upcast it, I want to say. Uh, the cantrip? Spare the Dying? Or, or the, sorry, the range increases. When you range- level? Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. As you level, the range increases. Just is, I, you know, <laughs> kind of funny. It's a, it's a little funny. Uh, yeah. Let me see if I can. Hold on, let me see if I, can, if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it in the Necronomicon that I should not be reading. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the range doubles when you reach level five to thirty feet, and then sixty feet at eleventh level, and then one hundred and twenty feet at seventeenth level. So, yeah. So, yeah, you could just slap an additional 30 feet on each of those steps, I suppose, if you want. Uh, But it is funny that it kind of nullifies the the Grave Domain Cleric. I mean, Grave Domain was already so good that, like, it's okay. It can take us a minor debuff. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, it's true. Grave Domain is still pretty solid. Anyway, any, any, any thoughts or final rantings you want to unleash no not particularly no nothing you're just gonna gonna leave me high no i mean look i I, i'm not i mean i screamed into the void before the session um (laughs) it's not look here's the thing if it if we got like ranger level oh my god fighter i'd be screaming right now yeah oh my god dude i'd shoot myself 
absolutely. I, I, I genuinely don't even know what I would do. Like, I, yeah, I, like, no, I don't know. It'd be bad. That'd be oof. Sheesh. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm really happy with one, and I am okay. overall satisfied with another. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay with the other. And remember, kids, Hunter's Mark, one d ten. One d ten. One d ten. At level twenty, master of combat. Master of combat. Cleric, however, two d eight. Two d eight. Actual master of combat. <laughs> the real master of combat. <laughs> yeah, the the fucking the Chad cleric versus the soy jack <laughs> ranger. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh god, it's. I know. I know. It's becoming like a thing that people are complaining about the ranger hating, but like Jesus Christ, dude. Are people complaining about us shitting on the ranger? Not us, but people are complaining online that other like people in general keep shitting on the ranger so much. But you just look at it and go like, yeah, but but bad, but, but, but bad, though. So oh, yeah, this is the same shit. Where people are like, what, what's that game? Concord, where it's like, you need to give it a chance. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rip Concord. That's yeah, rough. Nah. that's rough. That's rough. I feel so bad for them. I feel bad for the artists, but I feel bad for all the devs. Uh, yeah, I mean that's fair. The, the devs, yeah, like, uh, but like that game is—it's got solid gameplay, but everything—it just looks so soulless. Yeah, I mean it's—it's it, it's a complicated scenario. I have a feeling. I have a feeling there was a lot of executive metal meddling in that game. To be honest, it screams of it. Yeah, I think so. Anyway. Uh, that's been us. Follow us on Twitter. And next week we have the last two classes. I'm pretty sure, right? We just gotta do sorcerer and druid. Yes. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, that's about it. I had another thought there, but it left my brain. Gone. Gone. Just gone. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. That's crazy. Yeah. Do you, do you want to you wanna add anything in? Yeah, I'm going to do it now so the audio can't cut us out. Peace, motherfuckers. I. Okay. You pleased with yourself? I am very. Okay. Goodbye, Internet. Goodbye, friend.